Yesterday on Twitter, Minecraft Bedrock Edition developer David, otherwise known as Cornerhard MC, let us know about a brand new tool that's official that will convert worlds between Java and Bedrock Edition and allow you to prune your worlds down to a smaller size. And there's a whole bunch more features involved in it than that. If you go over to the link that he shared, there's a whole bunch of information and resources on the docs.microsoft.com website that explain exactly how to use this tool. And interestingly enough, this tool is not one you can download. It's an online tool which requires you to upload your world to it, which means you can use it on any device, which is fantastic. The documentation goes into advanced features such as world previews, pruning, resetting your nether and more things like that. And if you go to the overview, you will find a little bit further down, hidden away, a little link to the Chunker app. Going to the link takes you to a very simple page, and you can see that this has actually been created by the Hive Games Limited, who make the Hive servers in conjunction with Minecraft. So this is an official tool in a sense. And you've got two options. You can either choose a world folder and upload your worlds directly from where they're stored on your PC or your device, or you can use a zip file or a .mc world file if you've exported them already yourselves. Going into choose world folder, I prepared two worlds for this demonstration and unfortunately one of them won't work. We've got a flat world, which is a very basic flat world that I do all of my ideas testing in, and that is 12.7 megabytes in size, so not very big. The other one is a download of the Truly Bedrock SMP for Bedrock Edition, which unfortunately is 1.5 gigabytes in size. And that one, although it went through a very long process of converting the files to be uploaded, I thought this was actually uploading. It says preparing world. It's not. It's in the background, basically just zipping up that world and preparing it for upload. Then when I tried to upload it, it said the file was too big. Unfortunately, there's nowhere on the site here that says what the maximum file size is that can be uploaded. I'm sure that's available in the documentation somewhere. So forgetting pruning or converting large worlds for now, we'll concentrate on my smaller world, which is my flat world. And if I click on upload, it will ask me if I want to upload it. And I press that, it will prepare it very quickly. And then it will ask me if I want to start the upload, which of course I do. Starting the upload, because it's such a small file size, takes absolutely no time at all. And once it's been uploaded, it will then give you a whole bunch of options for what you want to convert this world to. You can see up here that it says Bedrock Edition 1.18.30 source version, because that's the version the world was last saved in. But I can pick any Bedrock Edition world back to 1.12, or I can pick a load of different Java Edition versions as well and convert those. And you'll see right down at the bottom here, there's actually another button that says Advanced Mode. This is where you need to go if you want to start doing pruning your chunks, resetting your nether, and a whole bunch of other things as well. It will first generate a preview of the world, which is actually a really handy map that you can actually look around and see what's in your world. And using that, you can check the nether and the end as well and see what areas in your map have been loaded. There's also a full screen button, which is really, really good for people like me that just want to make a screenshot of their world to see what's going on or share it with people that they share their world with. Again, unfortunately, this isn't very good for people with large worlds or multiplayer SMPs, but it might work for substantially larger worlds than this one. Going onto the world settings screen, you can change all of the world settings just like you can in game and even a little bit more. You can turn this from a normal world to a flat world or even a void world. You can change the world seed, you can change the name, you can change where you spawn, you can turn on experimental gameplay and all these other features. You can go into the game rule and change all of the game rules the way you would like to, and you can even turn on locked content modes, the sort of thing that you would turn on if you are a marketplace developer. You can also change the weather settings on here, and in the miscellaneous section, there are other options here as well. Now, bear in mind, these other worlds in the mis miscellaneous section don't appear depending on which one of the Minecraft versions you've picked. So if I click on Java Edition 1.18.2 here, go back to Advanced Mode, go to World Settings, you'll see the miscellaneous category is completely empty. So the options you get very much depend on which version you're going for. So clicking to convert it to Bedrock Edition again, because obviously I want to edit this world and then download it to put back on Bedrock Edition, Go into world settings, I have all of the bedrock edition settings in here. So it's very smart in that way. Go into dimensions and pruning. Now this is very interesting because what this allows you to do 
is you can turn off the overworld altogether and you'll get a blank overworld. You can go to the nether and turn all the, the nether off altogether and have a blank nether. You could go to the end and turn that off and have a blank end, basically resetting those dimensions, but keeping the other ones if you wanted to. You could also say, do you know what? I actually want the overworld in the nether. I want the nether in the end and I would like the end in the overworld. Crazy stuff. I don't know why you would want to do that, but I like the idea that you can. Clicking this toggle here also will allow you to set dimensions that the system will prune chunks outside of. So if you know an area of your world you want to keep in terms of the chunk positions, you can put those in here and when it converts it, it will get rid of all of those chunks outside of those areas. Another really interesting feature of this is something called block mapping, which to me... I think this could come in really useful for map makers. You can basically pick any block in the game, such as cobblestone wall, and you can say, I want the cobblestone wall to actually come out as acacia doors in the direction facing one. I want it to be hinged. And yeah, there's just so much stuff in here. It's absolutely unbelievable how powerful this system is. And then going into the converter settings, you can see that there are some validation tools. You can use uh, block connections for very old legacy worlds. There's converting items, loot tables, and all the other good stuff as well. You can also discard empty chunks, so chunks that have been loaded but haven't been written yet. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, and all I'm going to do for this particular one is just move the dimensions around and see how this works. So I'm going to have the end in the overworld, the nether in the end, and I'm going to have the overworld in the nether. And I'm going to output it to Minecraft 1.18.30. Click convert. I'm number one in the queue. So obviously there's a queue for this thing. The more popular it gets, the busier it will get. And perhaps the slower it will be to convert and download your world. But that converted very quickly. Again, this is a small world. I can click download. I can choose a location to download that world to and hit save. So loading into this world, you can see it very much looks like I'm in the end. Now, I hadn't loaded a great deal of the end up in my flat world, so I've only got this end island here. I do have the end sky, so it has copied the biome data, but you can see as I move away from this, the rest of the world, the unloaded chunks are generating as the flat world as it should do. So this isn't resetting your overworld as the end. It's not going to allow it to generate end chunks in the overworld. It will only copy the chunk data that already exists. So now what we need to do is actually go to the end in the nether and find out what's going on over there. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop myself down an end portal because obviously going through that isn't going to take me anywhere at all. In fact, if I go through that, as I've already tested... It just kind of breaks the game and makes it impossible for me to place or break blocks. So we don't want to do that. Anyway, putting in these ender pearls here and actually making an end portal that's seemingly in the end, allowing us to transfer to the end will take us into, hopefully, the nether. It does. So again, we're in unloaded chunks here. So we're technically in the end, but all of the nether chunks that I've loaded have been loaded in successfully. And you can see all of the biome data and everything like that is in here as well, which is fantastic. Now what we need to do is find a way to go back to the overworld, which means I could really do with a portal. Aha, I have found a portal. So going through this portal should hopefully take me to the nether. So now we're in the nether, which is actually the flat world overworld because we changed things about. And for some reason, there are a load of hopper minecarts and things through. So it looks like entities don't get converted when the blocks get converted. But otherwise, everything else does. Now, obviously, this is a very strange use case for this app. I don't imagine many people will be doing this at all. I just wanted to see what would happen. So let's go and use the app, what it's actually useful for, and prune my world. Going back to Chunker, I'm going to hit restart. I'm going to choose World Folder. I'm going to choose the original flat world that we had so that I don't get confused. Upload it again. And I'm going to actually click to convert this to Java Edition 1.18.2. And in the advanced mode, I'm going to go to dimensions and pruning. I'm going to prune the overworld and I'm just going to do 10 chunks by 10 chunks. So everything outside of that should be pruned. I'm also going to turn the nether off and the end off. So they're completely reset and I'm going to convert that world. I'm number one in the queue. This is good news. Okay, it has exported. I'm going to hit download. 
And now this is giving me a zip file because, of course, this is going into Minecraft Java Edition. Which means I need to load up the Minecraft Java Edition launcher. And the next thing I need to do is grab that flat world zip file, open it up, go to my Minecraft save files, create a new folder. We'll call it flat world. And then all I need to do is just drag those files into my new flat world world. So now when I go into Minecraft and I go to single player, you'll see that I've got the flat world here. And if I click on this, hopefully we'll have a very, very, very small little play area right in the center. If I actually load up in the right place. Ready. No, I don't know where I am. I'm probably not at the center. I'm not. I'm miles away. So let's TP back to zero, zero. Oh, and here it. Wow. I'm right in Sutton. Yeah. I, mm, excuse me. Let's not TP ourselves into the middle of a farm. There we go. I have TP'd back to zero, zero, which is the center of my world. And you can see that my world has indeed been imported. However, you can see the grass for the flat world in Java edition is low is loading in much lower down than the original top world layer of bedrock edition because of how flat worlds are different on Java and bedrock. So if I hit F3, the original flat world top layer was at Y equals four. And in Java edition, it is right down here at minus 60, which is not ideal. But there you go. I've now successfully converted a world from bedrock to Java and pruned it. So all in all, my thoughts on this are that it's an absolutely fantastic system. Unfortunately, though, I do feel like the use case for it is very limited because you're only really going to be using those prune tools and all of that conversion stuff, I guess, if you're running a relatively large world. Now, I don't think 1.5 gigabytes of world size is that much these days, particularly on Java Edition. So being told that it was too big to upload and actually run this kind of makes the entire system a little bit pointless from my point of view. It is handy for small worlds or map makers. If you're making maps for the marketplace or something like that, and you just need to convert a world that you've edited in Java edition and you want to put it in bedrock or you want to change a few world settings or things like that, that's great. Or even just use the map feature. But for multiplayer players and SMP server administrators, it's pretty useless, which is a real shame because I really, really wanted to use this thing because it's nice and easy and it's very pretty. If you enjoyed this video, then I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy this one.